<laughs> you know, Carrie, uh, having lost the foot, um, we traveled together and it was strange to this day. I don't know how he did it. We would walk into a building and, you know, carrying our bags, dressing room this way, Carrie would go this way. And five minutes later, he would come back completely dressed in gear. And so it was clear to anybody that paid attention <clears throat> There were two stories that he had the ankle fused, that the ankle was gone, that the foot was gone. And I thought, well, this is, if he doesn't want anybody to know, that's his personal right, you know. And I I just couldn't buy that the foot was gone because if you watch him performing as the Texas Tornado and doing the bolo punch and stuff, I'm like, if he's got no foot, that's pretty amazing. Well, he had no foot, and it, it was amazing. Uh, he was an, a stud of an athlete. Um, but, you know, I, I did it. I tried as hard as I could to not impinge on that personal part of his life. <clears throat> he and I would room together quite often. And we were in Los Angeles. Uh, my brother had been a set designer that passed away in 2019, early 2020. Um, and he had gotten me a reading for a script from a lady that he'd worked with. Boots Hart was her name. And uh, I had gone out and done the reading. We had dinner and I, I went back. And I would always make noise at the door to, 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 so he, if he wanted to cover up or whatever. And he always, always did. Well, I made a bunch of noise during I opened it, and I, I go to walk in, and I could see the leg, no foot. So I closed the door quietly and made noise again, and you know, kept, finally went into the bathroom, and they finally did cover up. Uh, I don't say that to embarrass him in any way. I say it to, to like really put him on a pedestal because, again, go back and watch him performing as Kerry Von Eric. This is before all these new prosthetics that came up because of the Gulf War and I mean, the, uh, the war on terror and these new amazing prosthetics that, that these uh, uh, people have. Uh, and you go back and watch basically with a prosthetic foot with a slip on sleeve and watch Carrie perform and <laughs> see if you could see him missing a step anywhere or, you know, really struggling to get there. He was, he was an amazing, and I, I'm sure they will hit on that in, in the movie, uh, but I'm definitely going to go see the movie because I'm, I'm, I'm eager to see what they do with it, what liberties they do take. I'm sure they will take some, uh, but you know, overall, I think it's, a, it's the story, even aside from the tragedy of a family who, who stepped into professional wrestling, you know, had their father as the stepping stone into the business. And even in spite of all this tragedy, still left that big of a mark on the business. And that, that again, that ain't easy to do. Uh, the rumor that I was heard as a fan regarding Kerry's foot was that he'd injured it in a motorcycle accident, had surgery on it, and then someone who bet him that he couldn't walk across the dressing room and then he tried it and that's when the the absolute serious damage was done. Is that yeah. what you heard? Is there any truth to that? Yes, it wasn't a motorcycle. It was a quad Sorry, and he was out riding around and he came was coming up a real steep hill, I believe on their property. And somebody had called the police, I guess, and for, for whatever reason. And it, my, again, my understanding was it was on their own property. And when he got to the peak of the hill, he saw the cop cruiser sitting there and he just instinctively tried to turn. Well, his ankle got caught in between and the foot peg went through his ankle uh, and just completely shattered the ankle. And he would later tell me that, you know, the, 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 the addiction that he followed up with that, that would lead ultimately to his suicide uh, was, you know, he said, you don't realize how much of a shock absorber your foot is. And so every step he would take, even with the prosthetic foot, it would go into his ankle or, or his lower leg, into his knee, into his hip, into his back. And each one of those, you know, was just pain, 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 pain. And, uh, uh, you know, he had gotten busted for writing bad scripts. And, the, the you know, they, they obviously the family was well known in Dallas. And the judge told him, like, you know, warned him prior to that. If I see him here again and saw him in there again, and he told him to go home, get his affairs in order. And uh, Carrie went and took the other way out. And uh, uh I remember that like really when I heard that it really jarred me because of the conversations that he and I had had in the car. Uh, but you know, you put a 44 Magnum to your chest, <clears throat> that ain't a cry for help. You're, mm -hmm. you're serious about leaving. And uh, so again, I, I hope the movie, it, even if it touches on the tragedy and, and, and brings it into it, I hope it really does get into the type of people they were, you know, cause again, as little as I'd met Kevin through the course, we didn't, our, our careers didn't really intersect much. Uh, Kevin was really quiet compared to the other ones as far as I was concerned. Uh, but you know, you could always seem like a really good guy. Uh, 
there's guys in our business. I'm sure a lot would say about me that, you know, some of us are assholes and, and some, are, I always saw Kevin like that. And I, and I love Carrie. Carrie was just a, you know, a great guy. So I, I hope that I, I'm sure the movie will, you know, like dip into all that, but I'll definitely be in a the theater with my popcorn catching it for sure.